Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to go over how to do a hypothesis test for regression parameters. I've got our Indiana 100 data set loaded up just like in the previous video. I'm going to go ahead and run a regression of income on age and sex. Recall that the variable sex was a dummy variable with one for female and zero for male. So what this means is that women tend to have about $14,000 less yearly income than males. Now the question that we want to ask is, is this difference statistically significant? That is, can we reject the hypothesis that the effect of being female is zero? There are a few different ways we can do this. And the first one is to look at the T statistic. The way that we go about doing that is by taking the coefficient estimate and dividing that by the standard error. Now remember to use DI for display when you're doing calculations in the state of command window. As you can see here, I've got a T stat that looks very much like the one that was produced by the regression output. The T stat that Stata reports in this column is always the T stat for the hypothesis that the parameter that we are estimating is zero. We could also calculate T stats for other hypotheses. For example, let's say that we had the hypothesis that the effect was 10,000. We could test that as well by subtracting negative 10,000, so that is adding 10,000 right here, and we could get the corresponding T stat for that test as well. Now, what does this T stat mean? The first thing that we can do is compare the T stat that we have to the critical values for the degrees of support that we're interested in. So for example, if we have a sufficiently large sample size, we can approximate these critical values with the ones from the standard normal. So for 90%, we would need 1.65. You can see that this T is bigger than that. For 95%, about 1.96. Again, this T stat is bigger than that. And then for 99%, approximately 2.58. Now you can see that we don't quite get to that point. So we're going to, re to reject this with 95% degree of support, but not 99%. We can confirm this by looking at the p-value. You can see here that this p-value is above 1%, it's about 1.3%, but it's below 5%, meaning the exact same thing that we concluded from the t-stat, which is that we can reject at 95% degree of support, but not 99%. A third way that we can look at this question is by looking at the 95% confidence interval that is reported in the regression. You can see here that this confidence interval does not contain zero. And remember that zero is our null hypothesized value. So we can reject that hypothesis with 95% degree of support since the 95% confidence interval does not contain zero. Now this tells us that we can reject with 95% degree of support, but doesn't say anything about 99%. We can do that though by running this regression again with an option. We can use the option level, and then in parentheses put 99. We can put any number in there that we want, of course, uh, such as 90 as well. If I run this, I can see now that I have a 99% confidence interval, and you can see that this interval does contain zero which means that we can't reject with 99% degree of support. So these are three different angles that we can come at this question and get to the exact same answer. Now what about our second hypothesis that the effect of being female was $10,000? Well, we can see that negative 10,000 is within both of these confidence intervals, meaning that we cannot reject that. Note that the T stat was pretty low here and is well below any of our conventional critical values. Let's go ahead and calculate the p-values for these tests. 
To do this, we're going to need to use display again, since we are doing a calculation. Now we're going to need the t tail function. And in parentheses, we're going to put two things. First, the degrees of freedom. What are the degrees of freedom here? Well, we have 100 observations. And we need 100 minus the number of parameters we're estimating. That is n minus k minus 1. The 1 is for the constant, and the k is for the two explanatory variables. So we have 100 minus 3, or 97. Next, we put in the t stat that we got. So we'll copy and paste this right in. And now we're not quite done yet, because t tail is a one-tailed function. We're going to need to multiply this thing by 2. Now, this looks a little weird, right? Because this p-value is bigger than 1. So something went wrong here. And what that means is that we put a negative number in here. Now, when we're using this function, to get it to work right, we always need to take the absolute value. So we're going to get rid of this negative sign. And now we can see that we've got the p-value that is exactly the one that we see in the table, about 1.3%. So to sum up with the t-tail function, you always need to multiply this by 2 if we're doing a two-tailed test, and we always need to take the absolute value of the t-stat. We can go ahead and do the same thing for the second test, that the effect was 10,000. We'll put this right in, in place of our first t-stat, and run this, and you can see that we get about 47%. That's quite a high p-value, and we again, are not going to be able to reject this at our conventional 90% and up levels. The last thing that I want to show you here is using the test command in Stata. The test command is how we can do a hypothesis test very quickly for any hypothesis that we might have. To do this, I simply type test and then the hypothesis that I want to test. So You'll type in the name of the variable that corresponds with the parameter that you're testing, and then equals zero for the test that the parameter is zero, or negative 10,000 for our second one. So we'll start with zero. You can see that we get the p-value, again, exactly the same as the one that we calculated before, and then we get an f-stat. The f-stat is simply another way of doing the hypothesis test, and it so happens that the f-stat is equal to the square of the t-stat. So we can back out the t-stat by taking the square root of the f-stat. You can see that this matches up with what we got before. We'll go ahead and test our other hypothesis that women make $10,000 less and you can see that we have the p-value exactly the same as before. And I'll take the square root of the f-stat, and we get the t-stat exactly the same as the one we got before. Now, you might notice that these are positive, but when we are doing the two-tailed test, the sign does not matter. One last important point to remember is that the test command is directly tied to the last regression that you ran. So if you are running multiple regressions in a session, you must remember if you want to test the parameter using the model from a previous regression, you're going to need to do it again. For example, if I ran a regression of income on just age, and then I did test sex equals zero, like I did before, this command is not going to work because the variable that I was testing was not in the last regression. So I'm going to have to go and run my original regression again before I can do this hypothesis test. all I have to say for now about hypothesis testing in regression. If you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks for watching.